project is funded by ELRA UK, which is a charity that's funded by the Department for International Development, now the Commonwealth and Foreign Development Office. And for this project, I hired four RAs. Two had an MBA background, one had a social science background, and one had a, a human development and human security background. Uh, they all came from the countries which were part of the processes that we would explore. Uh, there were four case studies that we looked at, or four countries where we had six case studies for this project. And the goal of this work was to explore how colonialism manifests itself in humanitarian models and uh, what other, we wanted to explore what other philosophies could exist surrounding humanitarian intervention. Uh, indirectly, we were looking at innovation in the humanitarian sector being uh, a third wave of colonial practice. And the four countries that we focused on were the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Indonesia, Guatemala, and the Philippines. So the key questions that we asked in this work were, um, are we failing to understand or learn how creativity can best be explored and ex supported in different cultures? Are we imposing values and methodologies that unwittingly hinder the localization agenda or transfer of power to local communities for their abilities to self-determine? And are we perpetuating a Western dominance in any of our practices in, any, uh, in the humanitarian response? So the answers to all those questions, of course, were yes. Um, and we talked to six different communities, two in Guatemala, one in, in Indonesia, one in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, and one in the Philippines. And we also traced back the Philippine innovation to an innovation in Brazil. So we spoke to six different innovators about what humanitarian innovation meant to them and what different processes were involved in each of these. And uh, we looked at how local knowledges and conceptualizations influenced or didn't influence the innovation practice. So we um, also wanted to look at what was most important to different community perspectives at the community levels. And we had two indigenous populations or Mayan indigenous populations as well as uh, local development actors. So we also looked at the funding landscape, uh, given our NBA students' background, how much was invested in humanitarian innovation and by whom and for, for what and, and where. So interestingly, we found that for every dollar that was spent on the past five years in humanitarian inter inter innovation, 94 cents of that dollar was spent on scaling opportunities. So that left only six cents for looking at local pilot knowledge. And then we also looked at who was able to be funded. And obviously, in the, this landscape, funding is competitive. But only 1% of all, uh, all applicants could eventually have been funded. And then looking at those partnerships, all of those partnerships came from institutions in the global north. So it wasn't necessarily surprising, these findings, but what they confirmed, to me at least, was that the humanitarian innovation sector was dominated by key players from the global north and uh, local knowledges low-income countries and contexts that were most impacted by the humanitarian emergencies received very little attention or space in the funding landscape.